You can now control the hood in UEFN. For example, you can now display the player's icon, the player's name, current health, current shield, death messages, and also make custom materials like this one to make custom health and shield bars that actually work with absolutely no verse whatsoever. You can now also move stuff around in the UI too, like this mini map. I'm going over absolutely everything, so let's get to it. Okay, so to get started, we need to go into the content drawer and we need to find an old device that came out a while ago, but it recently got a huge update called the HUD controller. We're bringing it out. Now in here, uh, you'll be able to see all these options. This allows you to control the entirety of the HUD. So show HUD, you can do yes or no, stuff like that. It's, it's all of the, you know, the original options that we always had. But the recent update added so much more usability in this device. I mean, it's crazy. So there's a few things you can do. And we're going to start off with some simple stuff, okay? Now, these do not override. Uh, the, what they're overriding is um, the HUD right now. What the, what the HUD's on the HUD. As you can see, in my game, uh, I have my mini map there. I have my health down there. My build menu is down there. You know, this is normal. There's nothing really different about this. But there's something new you can do. I can actually go into here. I can do override yes, and now I can override. Now, this, now originally this would just show the minimap or turn off the minimap. But now as you can see, there's a new option down here called modify minimap layout. And if you click on this, you're gonna get a new options, and this will allow you to change the uh, the the where the minimap is on your hood. And if you go if you go into uh, if you go in game, you can see uh, the, the, the the you know where where pins a lot easier. So I'm gonna do I'm gonna do top left here. But can you find that's what this would look like? Top left and top left. But with this, you don't you don't even have to push your changes. You just have to go back in and start the game. You're gonna notice the mini map will be on the other side of the screen. See that? Now it's obviously you know it's, it's not perfect because it's kind of off the screen. So to fix that, what you can do is you can do add a little bit of X offset. So you can go a bit under 500, 500. Let's see what that looks like. That's 5,000. Okay, that well, 500 is a bit, bit too much. It's not all the way down there, but you, you get what I mean. You can, if you can change the HUD elements on the screen. Now this is also includes stuff like if you see the build menu, you can change the way the build menu is on the on the screen. Player inventory. What I can do is I can modify the player inventory and I can put that on the on maybe the top center. And then you can see my inventory is at the top. <laughs> this is super cool. The other thing I can do is I can go and I can go down to health. I can do this and I can do modify health and I can anchor it to maybe the uh, I can do I can do bottom center. When I do health, that brings over as uh, shield and shield numbers and health numbers too. So now if I go in game, you can see I can see my health at the bottom of the screen. And obviously I can bring that up a little bit. So it's like it's like old Fortnite where um the UI was on the, was on the bottom middle. It's kind of cool. I can do this with a lot of other stuff. It's really cool. And just for an example, I just went through and made everything yes. So you can change the mini map. You can change the build menu you can change the inventory you can change the team info you can change the health obviously you can change the crafting resources uh you can change the equipped item info you can change the location of the sprint bar uh and, and yeah that's, it's really cool it's really cool now this is not all because you can actually override this hud to make a custom hud element so if i wanted to if you go down here you're going to see something called a player info widget override and widgets are what we're going to use to uh you know make this work what we want to do is we want to go into our con drawer and we're just going to a make a folder called widgets. So inside our widget folder, what we want to do is right click. What we want to do is we want to go to user interface, get a widget blueprint. Click on this. We're going to get an option for either a user widget or a module dialog variant. User widgets are what we're going to need for this, but module dialog variants are also good for, um, that's, that's for buttons. So we're, we're not going to use any buttons because we're, so we're just going to use a user widget. We're going to call this our hood. Now if you click inside of here, in here, first step, we want to get a canvas panel to drag that in. There we go. Now, what we can do here, uh, we can actually get the, the values of our player's name, the player's icon, or their skin they're currently wearing, uh, their their health, their shields, a lot of stuff. And we can also check if they're down, if they're alive. Well, I'm not sure how to do all of it. Okay? First step, I'm just going to get a text block. Now, I'm not going to go in depth about the UIs and all this and alignment. I'm just going to show you the basics of binding and everything. But first, what we need to do is we go down to view bindings, and then we're going to need to make a view model. And the view model, if you click the add view model, uh, there's a few different types, but the one we need is HUD controller because that's the thing we're doing. If you click on this, uh, this is our HUD controller, teams and squad player li info list. And then in here, you can see all of this too. And what we need to do is we're just going to select this. And we have now have this view model. And if we go out, now we can bind stuff to different things. And this text box, what I want to do is, I, 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 you probably saw earlier, but I made the justification in the middle, so it stays in the middle. Uh, but it's fine. This text box is going to be our player name. I'm just going to call it player name. Secret simplicity. 
So this is where our player name will go. Calling it player name is not going to get the player name in it. By the way, <laughs> we, have to, we have to do more stuff than that. But now what we need to do is since we got our remodel, you can now see we can now add widgets into here and create bindings. Now what we're going to do is we're going to select our player name. We're going to go back into view bindings and we're going to add widget event text block to here. And the event text block is our, if I just go up here and I'm going to rename this to our player name and view bindings, it should be called player name. There we go. So what we need to do basically is we need to get the player's name and we need to bring that into the text inside this text block called player name so first we need to get the text of the player name so we click on here and we'll just grab the text of the player name we got that now this we're gonna keep this the same and in here what we need to do is we go to HUD widget move model, click this down, and now we can see we have access to a bunch of different things. So what we need right now is the player's name. So if I compile that, that should now work. So now we have the player's name collected this text. So if I go back into here, click on my HUD controller, go all the way down to the bottom of it, you see this option called player info widget override. And if I click into here and then I and then I select HUD, that's gonna be our HUD that we just made. And now we get the player's name when they're playing the game. So if I non-suggestion again. Alright, so here we're in game, and as you can see, if I look game, I can see my player name name is actually being displayed in the middle of the screen. Isn't that pretty cool? And for example of how to show your health, this is going to be just a number. I'm going to show you how to make a health bar later, but I'm going to make a health here. I'm going to make it so it's anchored to the middle and then I'm going to copy this. Then I'm going to paste it. And then this is going to be our shield. I'm going to put that there too. And I might make this, I might make this green, that color, and then be, this will be that color for my shield. Okay, let's, let's do the health first. So if I do, I'll add a new thing. Uh, this text box is our, our health, so I should, I should rename it. I would rename your stuff because it gets, it gets very confusing later on. That's not even so shield, is it? Okay, so once we have our health, we want to go back into view bindings, and then we'll have it selected, and we're going to add the UFM widget health. Then uh, what we're going to do is we need to get the text, as you know. Then we need to go over here, and we're going to go into the HUD budget model. We're going to get, we're going to get the controlling player info. I'll we'll grab the health, and we'll compile it, and you're going to notice we get an error. Now, why is this happening? So basically, uh, the reason why this is not working is because, uh, for example, well, when we do the player name, player name already worked because player name is a string, so it's easily converted into a text. So we don't need to convert it or anything. But health, health is a float, aka a number with a decimal point. We're, we're just going to clear it, and then we're going to grab a conversion function, which is of two text integer, and then in here we're going to we're going to bind it to the health of the player, like so, and then. That should be good. Now we compile it, and now it's worked. So now we have it bound. I'm pretty sure that this is a float, but it, you can use it with an integer, so I don't know. I think it just rounds to zero. And then we'll do the exact same thing with shield. So we do shield, we'll add a new one, and we'll get text. Then we'll get the, we'll go make a conversion function to, to text integer. We'll get the value that is the player's uh, player's shield. Let's save that. And now we have the player's health and shields. So if I push changes, and all right, now in game, you can now see my health is right there as 100, and you can also see my shields, my current shields. And just as an example, I'm gonna blow myself up. Just look at that, I'm now at 50 HP. And then if I walk over to here and I get some health, like this slurp thing. As you can see, look, I'm now healing. So it automatically updates to when I'm healing and it displays my shields too. Now, th now this is not all because we can also, if I grab a, an image, I'm going to put it here and this is going to be an image of my player, of my current skin. So what we do now is this is going to be my image of skin. And then in here, I'm going to go into my view bindings and I'm going to add, my, add it to the widget down here. Now for this, what we need to do is we need to get the brush. The brush is what we need to change. And we're going to grab the brush. And then in here, we're going to conversion function and we're going to get make image brush from texture. We go into here. We now need to get the image and we can link that to the player's uh, avatar icon, which is what their skin is. Now if we save this, it should work. So if I go out and I push the changes, you can now see, would you look Look at that. My image of my character, which is, you know, the Reaper is on my screen. Isn't that cool? And just for the sake of the example, I've made a changing booth. And if I go inside of here, then if I go and change my skin to something else like Tomato Head, for example, go out, you can see my icon is now Tomato Head. So it updates just like the health and shields. Ah, right, yeah, that's, that's much better. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is we can actually check the states of the player and we can display things on the screen depending on what state the player is in. So for example, if I do a text block, it's gonna be, I'm gonna call this uh, downed and this is gonna show only when the player is down. So you are downed uh, or knocked over or knocked down or what's called. 
Make the size huge. Size the content on. That works. Now, this will only show when the player is down. How do we set that up? You're probably wondering. So, what we need to do is we go into view bindings, add our new widgets we just made. And then in here, what we're going to do is we're going to get the visibility. And in here, we're going to get conversion function uh, to visibility boolean. And then we can do is visible, is visible. And it's going to check the boolean of is, uh, is down but not out, which is, you know, down but not out. And true visibility will make it visible. And false is you will be collapsed. Now, if I compile this, it should work. Now, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to add another text and this is going to be you are being revived and you can also do this too and if you go into here you can add in you know down the this is I'm just call this name we grab the visibility again we're going to do conversion functions the visibility and then we're going to get the visibility we're going to say we can, we can now do is being revived from being down but out bring that in I think that should work. Let me just save it. So now these will only appear on your screen if you're downed. And then this will only appear on your screen if uh, you're being revived. I don't know why, but every time I press this button, I'll just die. And I, but anyways, it should work if you tried, if you did it. Okay, now another thing we could do is if I do the, if, uh, for example, if, if I just get my icon and then if I go into the view bindings, we'll make a new binding for, for widget of skin. And then here, there it is. So we have, we have our old one, but we also have a new one down here. You see it? So what we can do, we can do visibility of this too. So we actually have two bindings and then it will do conversion function visibility boolean and then we can do is visible uh when the let's say is the player eliminated so if they are eliminated it's going to we want to make it so it's collapsed and then if it's if it's not true uh we'll make it visible and basically what this is if the player dies uh, they can't see the icon anymore so if, if i just compile this and then if i go into uh, push changes if i walk into all those explosives i want to die instantly but it, you should see that my icon of my character will disappear but everything else should stay so let's walk into it. Now I'm dead, and as you can see, my icon disappeared. What you look at? <laughs> and now I can also do the complete opposite of this, where let's say if I died, I can display "You are dead" or something on the screen. And since the respawn time is low, so it, it doesn't display for that long. But if I do something, we will go into our island settings. We're going to do respawn time, and we're going to set that to maybe 10 seconds, and then we're going to go back into our HUD. And I'm just going to move these here, and I'm going to add a new one that's going to be for you're dead. You died. Dark Souls, <laughs> you died. We'll grab the the thing like like we did last time. And we'll add it. We'll find it down here. We'll get we'll get the visibility of it, and then we're gonna bring in the. Sorry, we need to we get a conversion function to visibility. Then we then we need to go into here, and then we need to go here at the drill. We're gonna grab our limited, but we're going to make it so it's gonna be visible, and if it's not, be false. So this is going to be the opposite of. Uh, of this one because you want it to only appear when the player is dead and then we'll we'll compile it and save it now if we walk into here and die <laughs> you know see you died and now we have to wait the 10 seconds to respawn so yeah, that's some pretty fun little stuff right there and i'm not going to do these as examples but there's a few other ones like you can do is this connected to you can also do um uh, is reviving so if they're reviving somebody you can also get the, the numbers for the max health, max overshield, and uh, the max shield and overshield too. Okay, now the last thing we're going to do in this video is I'm going to show you to make a custom health bar. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete uh, basically all of this and it's going to ruin these. So I need to delete these too. And we're going to make a custom health bar that can, uh, you know, do down here, show the player and everything. Okay, I'm going to make some really simple, really simple uh, UI material thing. So I, I imported this little like uh, rectangle that's like white. And that's going to be what we're going to use for our health bar. And we're going to go in here. We're going to make a uh, material, which is going to be our health bar. And for this, I'm going to thank Insane UEFN or Jerome for, for this tutorial. Uh, go check him out. He's pretty cool. So first step, we need to click on our, our health bar thing. And we need to go down to the material domain. And we need to make it a user interface. Now we need to make it also translucent. And there we go. Now what we need to do is we'll drag in our texture. Then what we do is I'm going to hold three on my keyboard. I'm going to click and I'll make a constant three. And this is going to be the color of a health bar. So I'm going to make it. Uh... Then what we need to do is we get a multiply node. And then with this multiply node we need, to, we need to put it into here then i need to put our other one into here then that's gonna do that then we're gonna need something called lerp and basically what this will do is linear interpolate but that's for short it's lerp so what you do is you need to put this into a we need to put this into b and then we need to put a of this into opacity as the alpha of our image is going to be uh, where it is. it's going to be opacity and then our lerp is going to connect into our final color and right now alpha it needs to be something okay so we need to make something first so basically what we need to do is we need to make a mask that's going to go from left to right 
of our input. Okay, next step, what we need to do is we need to make a parameter. Okay, we're going to get a scalar parameter and we're going to call this progress. And we're going to make the default value of this 100. This is going to be for the player's HP. We'll just, we'll just leave it here. Next step, we need to get a remap. Then we'll plug it into here. There we go, that works. Then we need to get an append. I believe it's this one. And then we just need to bring this to here. Then we'll hold one and click and we'll make a constant that's zero. zero and we'll put, add that into the append. Next step, we need a texture coordinate like this. And then we need to subtract, which is this. We subtract these two. Then we get a seal. Sorry, seal. Put it into a seal. Then we get a mask, a component mask. Put it into the mask like so. And then we get a clamp. This clamp will be for, we'll make it minimum zero, we'll make it maximum 100. Fill it into there. Then we'll throw this up into the alpha up here. And now it should be working. So if you see this, it's going to be like this. If we change progress, we make that 50 or zero. We're going to see now it's kind of like not working correctly because because it only works from 0, 0 0.5, 1. So to make it work for, for like health, we need to multiply progress. Uh, we need to plug it into here. And we need to multiply that by 0 0.01. Now, basically what this will do is since it's health, health, like probably basic health would be 100. So if I do 100, now it's going to be full. If I do 70, it's going to be at 70%. 50, 20, etc. So that's how you do it. So now our material is complete. Okay, here we are in our HUD again. Uh, I'm just gonna move them. I'm, I'm gonna move player name and the icon down here. So it looks cooler. And then what we can do is go on Conjure. We wanna get our health bar material and we'll drag it out. And this is gonna be a health bar. So we just put it right there. There we go, health bar. So now if I change progress inside the health bar, the 50, for example, it's not gonna be 50. And it's perfect. That's what we want. Next up, we wanna select our, our bar. Go into view bindings. We wanna add widget image. Then we're going to get the brush. Actually, I might I might rename it to health bar. There we go. Going to view bindings. We get the brush of it. And in here, we're going to get the conversion function. We're going to get the scalar parameter. And then we're going to get the scalar parameter of progress, which is the one we made inside. Actually, it's, 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 it's a capital, isn't it? Yeah. So we'll, we'll make it. We got to make it exactly the same. So it's progress. There we go. Perfect. And then once we have our scalar parameter, we got our health now. Now, this is going to set health to the progress. So let's say if health is 100, it's going to be full. If health is 50, it's gonna be half. If health is zero, it's gonna be you know all the way down. So we can now track the player's health. So if we just compile this and then we just push our changes. So now as you can see, my health bar is full. If I walk into one of these explosive things, you're gonna notice my health bar goes down. It's going down. So now we have a working health bar that fully dynamically changes the health of the player. Let's say I wanted to make a shield bar. I'm, I'm just going to duplicate this and it's going to be called shield bar. If the material called shield bar, if we go into here, and then what we're going to do is we're going to make this color, uh, maybe like a more shield color, like blue. Now, now the bar should be blue. So now if I go into here and I drag in my shield bar, now this is going to be for my shields. It just lines up perfectly. There we go. We now have shield bar so we go into our view bindings like last time and then what we can do is since it's the same uh progress we don't have to change the name of uh the, the parameters or anything because it's uh it's uh, the same thing so what we can do is grab this this is image two so i'm going to call this shield bar i'm going to view bindings and then the social bar. So we're gonna grab brush. Then we're gonna grab conversion functions. We're gonna get the get scalar parameter. We're gonna set the scalar parameter progress to current value that is our shields. There we go. And now we have shield bar. Now if we go in here, you're gonna see there's a white bar underneath my health bar, which is my shield bar. So now if I you know pick up something like choke splashes and get some you can now see my shield bar went up. Isn't that cool? So now if I walk into all of these explosives, if you look at that, the shields are now working. <laughs> so yeah this is a really simple ui <laughs> to, to make it, it, it is very very simple now you can make it as many times as you want i i literally used a white rectangle for this but you can make it so it's like a, a any kind of shape you like yeah so remember to like subscribe uh and use my code in the fortnite am shop and thank you to all of our members of the channel become a member of the hunter channel today i watch all these videos for more of my tutorials that's about it i'll see you all around